I'm gonna try and help you. So for a while now, one of the biggest videos on the channel has been how to abstract doodle. But I've never really gone into the line and wash process of how to abstract doodle. So that's what this video is. I'm going to go through a couple of different things that I do. How do I make decisions? Why do I figure out where this goes where and what goes over here and what do I do? You'll see it's really very simple and it doesn't take a lot of thought, which is why it works well for me. All right, let's get right into it. Okay, so to help you learn how to do this, it's, there's a couple things that are very simple to do. You're gonna allow the paint to do most of the work for you. And I'm gonna just show you the beginning of how I start. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make two areas of color, and I'm gonna let one dry, and the other one I'm gonna do something different. So. Here's some color. This is the Perylene Violet. I use it on just about every painting that I do. I just love the color itself. All right, then I'm going to do another one here. I'm going to let that dry first. I'm going to do another one here. Just give it some room to move a little bit. Okay, now while this one is still wet, I'm going to let that one dry. But while this one is still wet, I'm going to go back into it with the same color and just make a couple of darker areas. Okay, that's not very difficult. You can see that. But really the point is you want to have the paint make the texture for you. That's one of the most important things when you do this. That's pretty well dry now. It's not 100% dry, but it's pretty much dry now. So what I'm gonna do is go in with a Perylene Maroon. Okay, it's a darker shade, but it, it will stand out in the mix. And you're, I'm just going to give it a couple little lines. Now it's spreading a little bit because it is still a little bit wet. There you go. So those are my two examples. Now I'm going to show you how to make that section, just that part, come to life with a little bit of ink. Let's let that dry. You know what, I'm going to do another one, just because I want to. So let me get some color on here. Okay. Again, I'm going to start with the same color. Same basic shape. I'm not doing anything different. I just want you to see what you can, how you can allow the paint itself to make the decisions for you. So I don't have to know. A lot of people go about this, they put the ink in first. A lot of people do that. Then they put in the color. I just think it's so much easier to put in the color. Let that work for you, especially if you're using, now this happens to be a cold pressed paper. If you're using cold pressed paper, you're gonna get a lot more texture in here than if you're using a hot pressed paper. You can still do the same thing though. It's the same thing. Okay, well that one's drying. I'm gonna come up here and put some ink in. So all you wanna do is, you see where the lines are, right? So the first thing that I usually do is I outline the piece. Now this happens to be, this is a Pigment Micron 01, which is 0.25 millimeter. I'm gonna come over here with an 05, which is 0.45 millimeters. I'm gonna make it a little bit thick and just outline the area. Now you can put in, see all these little weird little things around the outside. You can accentuate them or you can completely erase them. I usually like to accentuate them because it does help a little bit, but I'll give you an example over here now. I can just go like this and just completely erase all of that if I wanted to. It just gives it a little bit more texture when you go ahead and show every little groove and nook and cranny that the paint has created for you. And sometimes you don't want to put a solid line, so you'll put little, you just put little marks on the edge if there's a lot of variation. Like down over here or down over here, the, pretty much all of it is really varied because it's a hot press, or cold press paper, so it has a lot more texture on the outside than the hot press paper. Okay, so I outline it like that. You know what, I'll do this one too while it's 
because this one is basically dry. Now, if you go over it, see, I'm terrible. I've never been good at coloring in the lines. I always go outside the lines with my coloring book. And the same thing if I have the paint down. I don't follow the paint. I go outside the paint or inside the paint, and it doesn't really follow it. And you don't have to really do anything. So if you, if you happen to do it, and I did it right here on purpose, you can just fill that in. And now you have a more highly contrasting area. It just brings a little bit more uh, contrast to the piece, which brings a little bit more interest anyway. So you can do that. You can put all these little things in here. And if you put something that's not supposed to be there or you don't want there, you just fill it in with black. It's not a big deal. And you make whatever decisions. You ever watch Bob Ross? And, and one of the things that I love about the way that he taught people how to do things is he always said the same thing. He always said, this is yours. This is your art. If you want to decide to do a little thing here or a little thing there, that's your decision. This is your art. You can make it happen or not make it happen. If you don't like the way something looks, you can change it. So a lot of people do have trouble with this. It, they just, they can't let go. They can't, they, everything has to be so perfect all the time. And I've said this before, but I'm going to say it a hundred times in the future as well. This is the one area of my life where I let myself not be perfect is with art. Because everything else I do, I like to get things down and make sure that it's absolutely perfect and I have everything working exactly the way that I want it to. But really with art, I don't want to do that. I want to allow myself to have some freedom, some leeway in my life. This is the outlet for that for me. Okay, once I outline it in the thicker, I usually go in with something very small. So a 0.25, that's fairly small. All right, so all you do is look for the variation in the color, and you're going to start making marks that fill in that color. They don't have to be uniform. They don't have to be pretty. They don't have to do anything, really. They can just be, they can be scattered. They can be separated more, separated less. You can make them bigger or smaller than the actual shape that's there. It doesn't matter. It's just to give you an idea of where to put things. And in a minute, I'm going to show you here, just as soon as I get done with this, I'll show you the total end result of doing something like this in an entire piece and show you what it's like. And you can do a little bit more with this. You can add thicker lines or thinner lines or more variation or less variation. You do this however you want. This is your piece. So that's one way to give that thing some interest. The other way is if you do something like this with the same color, so you notice it's really dark around here, and then it comes up this way, and then there's a spot in the middle. So what I might do is just, just handle the darkest spots like this. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do this and uh, what I would do in different scenarios here coming up in a second. But right now I'm just showing you this aspect of it. This is just one way to do this. And then again I go back into that dark area and I'm going to give it some more lines. Now if I want something really dark, you could do the, this. Okay, I know people call this hatching and I call it hashing but then the other way they call it cross hatching and I call it hashtagging so anyway you go across to make it a little bit darker you don't do the whole thing so you're just gonna go a little bit here and then bring it down smaller and smaller and now this piece looks a lot darker than even it did before because you added more lines that cross over so it's all it just gives it an effect okay down here I'm going to use an entirely different color. So I might use a blue and do that couple lines in there, just like that. And then I got to let that dry and I'll do the same thing, put the lines in. So I had a, like a red to brighten up the area and put them in, or you have something to darken the area to put it in, or you use the same color, a little bit more concentrated to darken it. Isn't really no difference. 
Now really, if you're using cellulose paper, so if you're using regular sketchbooks, most of them have cellulose paper in them, you're just going to want to put lay down the color and go over it one more time with a single layer. You're not going to want to put a ton of layers on there. But this is the fun thing about doing this. It doesn't matter what happens to the paint. I'm going to show you a couple other things too. First I'm going to finish this while that's not dry yet. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. Let's say you have something that's a little bit more vertical. We're just going to make it attached to this piece up here. And once again, I'm going to go in with the same color and just make it a little bit darker where I want to make it a little bit darker. This is another one of my favorite colors. This is perylene green. So I like the perylenes. I don't know what that is. I just like them. So this is pretty much dry now. And I'm going to go back in and add the ink where I want to add it. See, now this is the other thing. You don't have to wait for ink to dry. Sometimes you can let ink dry for 10 minutes and it's dry. Sometimes you have to let ink dry for a day before you can go over it with paint. Otherwise it starts to move that ink around. So this way, even though these this is waterproof ink, and but you have to let it dry. You can't just go over it right away. Okay, so same thing. I added a shape and then added those lines to it. And that's not a big deal. And if you want to accentuate certain areas, so you see that there's a darker spot here, I might do that. I might put like a thin line here to accentuate it a little bit, pull it out, like call it out, say, okay, this is a this is a different line. Now you can go in here and you can either add lines like this that come around the side. You don't have to fill the whole space. Hey, that's it. You can just do it like that. Okay, up here. It's not dry at all. That's not dry even a little bit. So I'm going to show you something else while that's drying. One of the great things about doing this kind of thing is it doesn't really matter what happens to the paint. So let's say I put, uh, I'm going to put something fairly concentrated on and say, okay, that's, that's fairly concentrated. That's a Payne's blue gray. And let's say I went back in here trying to add some more and I accidentally take a wet brush and wipe it in here and maybe I'm gonna get start to get some blooms or something or you just drop a little dab of water on accident onto the piece right in the middle of your darkest spot there and it starts to lighten up and while that's drying I'm gonna add another little spot let's see I'll pick a different color maybe something a little bit brighter something a little bit with more pop on it maybe so I'm gonna do something like this I'm just going to make a little, just a little shape right there. A happy little shape that I'm going to leave right there and let that dry now. Okay, this shape is mostly dry. I'm going to go ahead and try not stick my hand in the rest of it and outline it just like I would. Now I'm going to make a decision here to say that this starts down here, even though it really doesn't. It just kind of blended. I tried to and it didn't work out, but it doesn't really matter. And there's, there's some weird shapes in here, but I'm going to ignore them right now. I would probably investigate them pretty heavily, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm just going to do this like that and just leave that alone for a second. So <clears throat> another thing you can do is use these lines like you're creating a shadow on something. So you start at the top very small and then you just get bigger and bigger and bigger as you get down to the end now here's something you can do once you do that you can make down here darker just with the ink so you're gonna start to come out and add secondary lines that go this way and maybe come down this way and so you're gonna add a little bit more this way so it's getting wider and wider as it approaches the bottom 
that's another technique you can use if there's an area that you want. So see how this kind of swings in and this swings in over here? I may want to take advantage of that and do something like this because it looks like it would be shaped like that. If it was a rock or something like that, you would expect to see those contour lines on there. So you could do something like that. And then if you want to do anything higher, same thing, you can do them at an angle. Now this way I did almost horizontally completely and then added an angle, but you can do them completely at an angle. and just get bigger and bigger as you get down to the bottom just like we did over here it looks a little bit smoother if you do that because it almost rounds that corner a little bit better whereas straight across doesn't really round anything so you can do that to round that and then you can start down here and do the same thing and just add whatever lines you want okay so that's another shape you can do another thing you can do is to uh, add these little contour lines and make this shadow kind of on the edge with these hash lines and that's all you can do okay let's get back to this one which is still not dry okay we'll do this one first this one is dry so I'm gonna make sure that I outline all the little lines that I see because I'm going to add some texture to this in a different way and these are just all the different or not all the different these are just some of the different ways that you can add texture when you're doing this kind of thing. First you put down the shape. Let the shape decide what you do with it. Okay, then I'm going to take the finer pen and every time it comes up like this, I'm just going to draw a line and make a little wedge at the bottom. I can do it again over here if I wanted to. Do it again over here. So I'm not just going up, I'm going up and then kind of rounding it. So I'm, I'm going up like this and then I'm rounding it out like this. So it's a little bit more of a gap towards the edge and then it gets thinner as it comes up. Okay, now you can do it from both sides if you want to. You don't have to just do it on one side. And you can create your own. So there was nothing there. There was a smooth one there and I just put that in there. Okay. Now you can do other things if you want. So you can have the lines all coming from this side to create the shadow. You can do that all the way down the whole thing. You can do it from the other side. So you can have it come off the top or off the bottom. It doesn't matter. You can also off the top or off the bottom just start putting lines like this that curve a little bit make it look like there's a little bit of shape to it and not just hey there you go okay this one is dry now so once again we're just gonna let the ink uh, the paint rather decide what kind of shape this is so I'm not gonna put a whole lot of detail on the bottom I'm going to leave it fairly straight, and so I'll make a thicker line to kind of cover up all the jagged areas. And really, when you're doing a whole painting like this, you're going to have another color right next to it that's going to cover up anything that you don't want to show anyway. So if you don't want to show all those jagged edges, you can make it smooth and then put the other color on top smooth. And just, so just like this here, this was a jagged edge, or this some of this was jagged. I rounded it smooth, put another color next to it. You can't tell the difference. So now something like this, I because I dropped that water in there, I don't care that there was a little bit of a bloom, although it actually doesn't look much like a bloom. It looks like it, I put it there on purpose. But anyway, let's pretend that this kind of looked like a little bloom. I'm just going to go around it like this. Right. Now I'm going to add... So I made it look like two separate things, but... I'm going to add whatever lines I want here to the darker area. Okay, and I can do the same thing. I can come down this way, go down the whole thing. And then here, do something entirely different 
that has nothing to do with the outside to almost make it look like it's an entirely different thing. Now it looks like it's either coming out of or sunken into the other part of it. And all I did was follow the lines. I just said, that this is what the color is saying. So I'm going to go around the color and just add details. And you can also add details on top of details. So I added all these curved lines. You can go on the bottom of every single one of them. I'll show you here where it's a little bit lighter. And you can just add little lines under here on all of them. And now you're putting a lot of detail in there. Almost looks like a cocoon from like a, a moth or something like that or a butterfly caterpillar cocoon thing. You can do that through the whole thing and add detail. The more detail you add, the more something's going to look interesting because it people have to figure out what is that detail so they look at it a little bit closer and say okay I didn't notice that before and they look at it just just pay a little bit more attention to that area now you can also do something very simple which I'll show you as well alright so let's say I'm just going to do a line there an entirely different line here different color and it doesn't matter what happens here. It doesn't matter if you put the wet next to the wet. This kind of moves over. You can already see the water kind of bleeds out into this area and pushes this color back. Don't worry about that. You're not looking for smooth color. You want the paint to do things like that. You want the paint to kind of move around and give you ideas and give you spots to put detail. That's the whole point of this. That's why you can just put paint on a page and anyone can do this, you just fill in the detail. Just gonna put a darker color next to that one and come right up against it. There were a lot of marks there, so I'm just gonna smooth it out a little bit. Now, if you wait till they dry, of course, a little bit, they don't bleed into each other. If you don't, they will, and it'll just give you an opportunity to do something. Now, something else I wanna show you is if you just make a random shape so let's say you're gonna make, it's a bigger here, it comes down, it's a little bit thinner here, it's bigger here. You know what, this is probably a terrible color to do this with because you won't be able to see it as much. Let me use a different color, let me use a brighter color. All right, we'll start down here. So, is that very clear? I think it is, I hope it is, okay. So, I'm gonna just give you a little let's see the shape I'll come this way a little bit with it I'm just gonna give you a random shape that doesn't really look like anything I'm gonna let that dry a second and I'll show you what to do with that okay so let me come back over to this one okay now I've outlined this one a little bit so you can put hard lines here if you want to if you want to separate these really hard you can but when you have something like this, you don't have to. You can make it a little bit looser if you want to. You could come down here and then kind of do this where they meet and just kind of make little jagged lines where they meet. You can do that. However, if you want to make it solid like this, now you see these two colors basically run into each other fairly well and you can make a decision of where it starts and where it ends and it wherever you put that line I just did a little jagged thing it looks like it belongs there it looks like I colored in this line exactly but I didn't I just decided where that went because the two colors kind of blended so you can make that decision yourself then here you can do little jagged lines here little dots here just follow the shape that it created. There. Now you have that shape in there that you can do something completely different with than you do this up here. Okay, now I've outlined this one. Here's what I wanted to show you. Anytime you have a curve in, you can just continue that 
and then just get smaller and smaller as you get to the other side and it just gives it a little bit of form a little bit of texture kind of like it was supposed to be there you can angle it up if you want to you can angle it down it looks like it's supposed to be there it looks like it's supposed to be that kind of shape so and you can do it anywhere anywhere that it comes in like that you can just do that and it looks like it belongs there you let the shape take place and anywhere where it comes in you just put that little thing there even right here where it comes in you can just do that you don't want to go bigger than the actual size of that to start so you just go about the same size and then you just bring it in a little bit okay one more thing I want to go you see a lot of times I go from like large to then shrink down to small size on the end okay I do that a lot no matter what I'm doing I tend to do that a lot now I think it's from so much swatching just swatching colors I just kind of do that whole thing and it goes in that direction I don't know but I'm going to show you how to do this now to make it look a little bit different and I'll show you this is just another technique that I like to use it just these are things that I like to do all right so the same thing I'm going to do that big over here kind of come down to a narrow area over here now this paint happens to be this is a mine blue genuine there's real mines in this paint uh, sorry about that so we just there we go we do something like that and you can it's a granulating color so I'm gonna move it around a little bit more so it doesn't kinda puddle up too much in one spot while I'm waiting for that to dry again just like I did here anywhere where that comes in so I can do this and just bring it in a little bit it almost looks like it's just sitting on top of there now if you go out to the other side you create a almost like a crack in here but if you just leave it rounded on one side like I did here it looks like it's sitting on top of the other piece and I can do this here and that time I went down you can do it any direction and I would say sometimes I'll go back and forth I'll do it on this side and then I'll do it on this side too um, you can but I'm not the biggest fan of that I generally like to stick to one side it just depends on how much detail I'm trying to put in and then when you see a big curve that goes out like this one here there's nothing wrong with putting a couple of marks this way as well and doing the same thing but from the opposite direction so either way you're creating that kind of just deciding where you want things to go and how you want them to look so in that instance I might do them all that way instead of having them go this way and this way well it's up to you you just do whatever feels natural whatever you think you want to do and see if it comes out the way you want if it does that's great who cares anything else does not matter now while that finishes drying I'm just gonna show you on something like this now this was very jagged and I made it very smooth and what I would do is then fill in all those little holes with just a little bit of extra dark ink like that but anyway sometimes you can take something like that you have something similar to this and let's say I wanted to maybe do there's not a whole lot of variation here but there's a little bit of variation here so what if I wanted to do this kinda of make this go out like this come in like this and then maybe I want to just follow whatever lines I see however faint they are to create something like that I can continue those other outer lines like this come down here maybe come in this way a little bit follow the same pattern that was here you can do that you don't have to and then fill in just like we did here something entirely different than anywhere else so I might want to just start with a circle do another circle another circle another circle and then just keep going out from that center of that circle 
and just keep going and fill up the whole space that way. You can anything you want to do in here, you figure out a detail and you put it in. Maybe on this one I want to just do little half circles. And that's it. I wanted to do that there and I'm going to might do something completely different in here. I may start with lines that go this way in here. I'm going to speed through this. I'm not really taking a whole lot of time to make sure that it looks nice. Not that I ever really do anyway. Just You just put the lines in where you want them and that's it. They're done. Now that's the first one. You go into another pattern in the second one and another pattern in the other one. But you let the you allow the color to dictate. That's the whole thing about this. Put the paint on first. Put a couple of little extra slops of paint in there of the same color or a different color inside the other color. Let it do something so it's more interesting. You can really see what it's doing. Okay, this is dry now. So one of the things I like to do is make things look like muscle tissue. I don't know if I can do it with this one, but anyway, this is it's just something I enjoy doing. So you just do little fine lines that run all the same direction down the whole thing. Very fine. Doesn't have to be, they don't have to be even, they don't have to be equal. You're just doing that. And then when you get to the end, you kind of do that same thing where you put that little that little texture in there to make it look like maybe there's a split there. It's splitting off and joining something. And then you do the same thing on this side. You just put that little darker spot of ink in there. Like that. And then you just darken in a couple of the lines that go, that follow similar to that line and just darken it in just a little bit more. And there you go, you have that. You can do it from this side too if you wanted to. But now you have something that looks like a muscle fiber or something that's connecting to something else and you'd have another one that's joined here that goes off into another muscle fiber or whatever it is. And that's just something else that I like to do, another type of pattern that I like. Alright, let's look at some some full pieces that I've done, some completed pieces that use this kind of method. Okay, here's one that I did of some kind of half, I guess organic, half machine cat looking thing. But same thing, I did the muscle fiber thing in almost all of it, all the way around. And then some machine looking parts that came out this way and this way and then the mouth and but anyway there's one example i just put the all the color on here first then i put the detail okay this one i just used a different medium i put this is watered down acrylic paint in the background then acrylic paint that i did or maybe it was not acrylic yeah i think it was i don't remember i've got to go back and look i think most of this is just acrylic paint then I used the acrylic paint pens to paint in the detail. And I used black and white because it pops a little bit. It makes it just come off the page a little bit more. So I did have some pure black areas in here that I only put the white on, but all the other fibers that are coming in here, I just put some black and white with it. Okay, so this one was a very simple one. I just put in very limited light color. And then I came in and put in a little bit darker color. And then I used a purple color that I put in on top. Then I just went and outlined all the detail with ink. That's all this is. It's not hard to do. Anyone can do something like this. There's a painting of all muscle fibers. They just all intertwine with each other. And you can see how I did the same thing. There's that little area where you just kind of do that split, make it look like it's split there. Or down through here, I did some over here. And then here, I had some of the color that kind of bloomed on me and I didn't know what to do with it. So I just split it and did something. I put this texture around it and left the center open. Here's where I did something similar where I had some darker areas and I just made sure I put in the details there and left the other part as the muscle fibers. Here's one where I did a little bit of that also coming in. But then on the back side, 
I just did like contour lines around the side so you can see it's a round piece that's kind of going this way. It doesn't look like the piece next to it or this other one. It's just a little different. And this shows that you can do anything. I didn't. This has no pattern that matches anything else in this piece. I just wanted to put it there. There's another one I did and I made this an eye, but I, it's the same stuff. And what I did here was add the lighter color with the darker color, just lines of darker color. And then I just, I actually didn't shade them doing any kind of hashing or anything else. I just put lines that went um, parallel with them around it. And I think it came out fine. So here's one I did very different again. I just made it, I just get put in as many details as I could to make it go with the flow. Like these, all of these smaller red tendril looking things go this way. You know, they all go horizontal and all the bigger colors all go vertical along with it. It was just something I was trying to see if I could make it look a little interesting by doing a contrasting lines. That's really it. Here's the one that I put less detail in than I normally do anywhere. But so in here, you can hardly see the detail here because this color is so dark. Same thing here. There's a little bit of detail. You can't see it that well. You can see it here. You can see it here and here. Some of these other colors. Here, I just went around the edge. I left the entire inside open. You can do that too. It's your piece. You do whatever you want. This also was one where these two colors joined and I had to decide where I was going to separate them. So like I said, I put those little hash lines all along the border, not defining the edge entirely until I got more closer to here where the lines were defined a little better. And then I went along with that. So this is the last one I'm going to show you. Basically, I, I think it is going to be the last one I show you. Anyway, it's the same thing here. The colors kind of bleed together. So I just put the hash lines in where I put the wanted to put the border and where it was a little darker. It looks like it was supposed to be there. It kind of just put random lines through this whole thing. Nothing really goes along and looks like muscle fiber. Instead, there are all these hash lines that just go in the darker spots. Anywhere there was a darker spot in the paint, got the hash marks. And that's what I did on this one. Okay, now this one was a little bit more of an extreme case. It's a long panoramic. I guess I lied. That wasn't the last one before. I don't know where the last one is. But anyway, this is a wide panorama view. And I, everywhere that looks like a lightish, lighter blue color, that had masking fluid on it. And then I put in all the darker browns and the yellows and the reds a little bit, the, those dark reds. And then I took off the masking fluid, put the different blues, light blue, dark blue, purpley blue, did all that. And then I did the same thing. I just put marks where there was difference in colors. And this is what I came up with. It looks busy. It looks very complicated. It was not. I just separated, like you can clearly see the two different shades of blue here. I just followed the lines and then I just gave them some texture. That's all I did. That's all this is. Okay, this will definitely be the last one. So here's a good example of like doing all the muscle fibers and how I connect everything and make it look like it's maybe connected to a piece of bone and then kind of goes off. And here's an instance where you had two different colors, where there was dark on the outside, but it was lighter on the inside. And I just made it look different. I made sure that you knew that it was pronounced and it was different. And I made little shapes that I wanted to. This actually, these little dots here was just because on the previous page, I had some ink spill through. So I just highlighted those spots and it looks like little moldy parts of muscle or something. I don't know. And then I did this one and then just gave it a little background. Just put some some hash lines across the entire background so it wasn't stark white because this was just white paper. That's it. There's no color there. But I did the same thing on all this. I just put in the color, put in the detail, see what happens. So the more I say this, the more I see how simplified my art is. It's very simple. I like to put the color in. If you watch any of my videos, you'll see me. I just put the color in and then I just put some detail where I want to put detail. That's all there is to it. You do it enough. It's very easy, very, it's nice. It's, it's very easy to do. This is, this again is where two colors kind of bled together. And I just decided to make it one, this side's round and this side's round. And 
This is one of my favorite shapes in the whole piece. And I didn't do it on purpose. It happened on accident because I just followed the paint. That's what it, you ever hear where if you want to see corruption, you follow the money. Well, if you want to see how my art develops, you just follow the paint. You can paint exactly like this and create something like this. I don't know if you want to, but you could. So thumbs up the video if you knew that that wasn't going to be the last piece and you're really looking at something else now that you didn't see before in the video. And I fibbed again. So anyway, that's about it for me. I'm going to go. I hope this helped you, and I'll see you in the next one.